The idea was simple, to create a festival of new photography here in Melbourne with the very best artists from across Australia and around the world. To focus on a single theme in depth and from multiple perspectives, to provide opportunities for artists to present their work both in galleries and outdoors at an urban scale, to inspire audiences and to connect with the global photographic community. After several years of planning, we have created a festival that speaks to what is happening now in contemporary photographic practice and what is coming next. I want to tell stories that are true to me. Photography has the power to change the world through changing the way that we see it. I think today, more than ever, it's important for us to embrace that power. People who have the ability to deny or reveal truth or truths have power. Photography is important at the moment because I feel like there's a lot of marginalised people, people of colour coming out and stepping behind the camera rather than in front of it and taking that gaze and telling their stories. Photo 2021 is going to put photography in a position of scrutiny across different institutions and through the medium of exhibitions and discussions. Photography as we know it is changing. The rise of artificial intelligence and social media and fake news is really shifting our sense of reality. Oh my goodness, if we don't have truth, like what have we got? <sighs> well, if you don't have truth, there's what is there? There's nothing. Good evening, welcome to tonight's program launch for Photo 2021. I'm Claire McKenzie, the Executive Director of the Festival. We'd like to start this evening by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're on. So I'd like to start by welcoming Uncle Bill to welcome us to country. Happy NAIDOC to everybody. NAIDOC is a great week of celebration for Aboriginal culture. But it's also something to remember that NAIDOC was a protest and it was something that our people were trying to achieve to create a voice to be heard. So there's, there's a message right there. Aboriginal people are wanting to be heard in this, in this great country of Australia. I'd like to congratulate Photo Australia for conducting this great festival, a festival where people can showcase the magnificent arts of photo, of, of, of art and a story. Because that's a very much um, part of how Wurundjeri culture communicated knowledge over thousands of years. Wuminjika, Gabba Malamangil, Banabun Yalambu, Wurundjeri Balak, Nirin and Marundik Bill Nicholson. Welcome and greetings and good day from the Wurundjeri people. My name is Uncle Bill Nicholson. That is the language handed down by Bundjil, our creator. The language of the land that the majority of Melbourne is now built on. The language of the Wurundjeri people, the sole surviving sovereign clan of the Barang or the Bidarang or the Yarra River as you would know it today. A symbol of our physical and spiritual connection to this country. I would like to acknowledge my elders past for my culture, my identity and my survival. I'd like to extend that to all the different Aboriginal people listening today. I'd like to acknowledge all your elders and I'd like to extend that to all the cultural leaders of all the communities that now live within the country of Australia. I'd also like to acknowledge from last week, we had a very special day here in Australia, Remembrance Day, remembering all the fallen warriors of Australia who fought for their rights here in Australia. I would like to extend that acknowledgement to all the fallen Aboriginal men and women who fought for their sovereign rights in the frontier wars here in Australia. Bunjil gave us land to care for, life to enjoy and the laws to live by, creating a culture of efficiency, sustainability and responsibility. That responsibility relates to everybody. Everyone is responsible to the health of country, both now and into the future. And everyone is responsible for the health and safety of our community around us. 
that's a very strong part of Wurundjeri law. And it's a responsibility we never handed over to the English. And I would like to extend that responsibility to everyone that lives on Aboriginal land, which is all of Australia. My people lived in some of the best conditions any society has enjoyed. Everyone knew their place, their position, the laws, the knowledge, the responsibility. And when the English arrived on our country, they noted parklands, gentlemen's estates, wide open spaces, beautiful landscape, expertly managed by my ancestors, mainly with fire. Now, this is a cultural terminology because I'm, I, I, I like to speak on behalf of my culture. So at the time of unsettlement, it was brutal for Wurundjeri people and culture. Lies, theft, disrespect. Even through all this very hard times, the Corrindert Mission where my grandmother was born, which is now near the township of Hillsville in the Yarra Valley, was a self-sufficient farm. It was where Aboriginal people had adapted to the European ways of life, and we, were, we had strong communities, strong families, and we were really pushing into a positive future. It was just unfortunate that the government decided that Aboriginal people were not allowed to have a future in this country and wrote policies to destroy us. My question today is, are we able to come to a mutual agreement with the government, with the community, and create a peace agreement or a treaty? All Aboriginal people are after in my perspective, is a better life for our families and we want peace and reconciliation with this whole country. It's a magnificent country, but it needs to be cared for because it's fragile and everyone has to understand their responsibility to it. Now, for true reconciliation, we must listen to each other, learn from past mistakes and never allow the past to happen again, those negative sides of our history build mutual respect, and I hope this country can be proud of its Indigenous cultures. And if you want to take a language word away today, Jindi Warabak, it means unity and coming together. It's one of my favourite Woiwurrung words. The welcome to country was a law ceremony, very similar to a passport. It gave you access. We would offer you vegetation to give you access to our resources. We would snap the spear to symbolise your safety. We would offer you water after we'd drank it to symbolise trust and respect. And then we get you to walk through the smoke of burning leaves. As I touched on earlier, fire was a physical cleanser of this land and a regenerator. The smoking ceremony is a physical cleansing of your spirit. We call it Mura. So the spirit of the land and the spirit of the people. So I don't welcome everyone to country unless this is observed. You must respect people, country and culture to feel truly welcomed. And Photo Australia, you showed some great respect. So I'd like to say to you as all, well, Ninjika one and Jenny Beer, welcome to Wurundjeri country. And I hope everyone has a great festival. So thank you. Thanks Uncle Bill for that warm welcome and acknowledgement of country. Today, I'm coming to you from the streets of Melbourne and I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm on, the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Thank you all for joining us for this online launch of our Photo 2021 program. On the eve of our program launch in March, we made the decision to postpone the festival. And here we are now, eight months later, ready to go live. While the world has changed around us, we've been very lucky to be able to shift our program relatively unchanged to 2021. We'll be opening in three months time on the 18th of February and the festival will run until the 7th of March, 2021. Over the last few months, many of you have joined us for Photo Live, our live streamed artist conversations and have virtually experienced our expanded program. Thank you all for joining us online during this time. However, come February, we'll be ready to celebrate with you in person. This evening, we are going to hear Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desso, Governor of Victoria, who had generously offered to host our program launch earlier this year before it was postponed. We'll then hear from the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap and our board chair, Mark Henry. Then it will be time to hear about the program itself from our artistic director, Elias Redstone. I'd like to now introduce Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desso, Governor of Victoria. Let me start by acknowledging all the supporters of Photo 2021, and also, of course, 
the traditional owners of the land from which I'm sending this message and I want to pay my respects to elders past and present. Well, I must say, full credit to everyone connected with Photo 2021's International Festival of Photography. I had previously planned to congratulate you all on your vision and your zeal in creating a wonderful new addition to Victoria's rich cultural life at what was going to be the launch of Photo 2020, which had been due to take place at Government House in March this year. Well, of course, that opportunity was taken away from us for obvious enough reasons if you think back to that time. So let me say there is all the more reason for kudos to you right now. Despite a global pandemic and all the challenges that it's brought, you've already managed to reimagine this exciting event so that in February 2021, Melbourne and Victoria's strong connection to the art of photography will be celebrated here and overseas as well. Now, I'll try to resist describing what you've done as an outstanding pivot. I think that's a word that we've all used so much this year that I'm happy to retire it for quite a long time. In any event, whatever we call it instead, you can be proud that you've cleverly recreated this event so that in a COVID safe way, it can help spearhead Melbourne's reawakening, celebrate our cultural strength and showcase our state well beyond our shores. Artists from all over the world will participate. Some of the program will be online, some events indoors, others outside, all in a mixture of iconic venues. And I know that many will be free to the public, which is wonderful. Victoria provides fertile ground for this new visual arts biennial. Our state, of course, has a strong photographic community. Melbourne's home to the acclaimed Centre for Contemporary Photography and to Asia Pacific's first master's degree courses in photography. So we've got much to be proud of. But Victoria also has something else. We are blessed here with a robust philanthropic community, generous, but also with great vision for our creative arts and industries. We owe profound thanks to Naomi Milgram and Bill Boness and Mark Henry, alongside all the donors, board members, staff, government, council and other organisations, all of whom have made possible the achievements of this new festival. I congratulate Elias Redstone, found, uh, founder and artistic director, both for, for his amazing vision, his tenacity and his superb curation of this first festival. And thank you too to the cultural institutions, museum, gallery and university partners who through their collaboration with the festival will add to the artistic ferment created by it. It's an absolute pleasure to celebrate the launch of the Photo 2021 program and I wish you all well. Thank you Governor for your support of Photo 2021. We will now hear from the newly reappointed Right Honourable the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap. The Lord Mayor has been a strong supporter of ours right from the beginning when it was just an idea through to our launch today. Hello everyone, it's Sally Cap. I am the Lord Mayor of the City of Melbourne and I'm delighted to be part of the launch today of Photo 2021. On behalf of the City of Melbourne, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which our city is gathered, the Bunurong Bunurong and the Wurrung Wurundjeri people of the Eastern Kulin Nation and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge our wonderful uh, Governor of Victoria, Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Dessau, AC, and to Mark Henry as Chair of the Photo Australia board and to your board members and executive team. Uh, thank you and well done for your efforts and commitment. We know here in the city of Melbourne that we are the home to thousands of artists and that those artists are the heart and soul of our creative city. It's been a really tough year for our artists and I'm so pleased that we're able to show our support for this major new International Arts Festival, Photo 2021. The Arts 
sector is coming together to provide opportunities for local and international artists to showcase their talent in an exciting new context. Photography is instrumental in the way that we perceive and see the world around us. And in 2021, photography will transform Melbourne's iconic buildings and billboards and parks, and it will be a special site indeed. Photo 2021 will be one of the first opportunities after lockdown for art and culture loving Melburnians to come together with international and interstate visitors to experience an arts festival that is spectacular, that has scale and has an amazing imagination uh, in the way that it is being delivered right here in the city of Melbourne. There are 40 free outdoor works and 39 free exhibitions as part of Photo 2021. All of these will be accompanied by an extensive and uh, entertaining online offering. Of course, that is the way of the world going forward. We are so pleased that COVID and, and the pandemic has not defeated Photo 2021 in bringing something really special uh, for next year for our international artists. I can't wait to see what it promises as not only Australia's leading photography exhibition, but one of the most significant festivals of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere. Congratulations. Photo 2021 is set to be one of the most adventurous, inclusive photography festivals in Australia and the City of Melbourne is proud to be a sponsor. Thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations to the Photo 2021 team on curating such a diverse COVID safe arts festival right here in Melbourne, accessible to everyone. Thank you to all the partners and supporters because it couldn't happen without you. And thank you for being part of reactivating our city with memorable activities that celebrate what is so special about Melbourne. Congratulations. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It is now time to hear from our Chair, Mark Henry. Good evening and welcome to Photo. I'm Mark Henry and I'm the Chair of the Photo Board. Can I acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation on whose land I meet with you tonight and to pay my respect to Elders both past and present and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are joining us this evening. A huge thank you to Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desso, the Governor of Victoria, and the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor Sally Kemp. We are so grateful for the amazing support you've shown to Photo, and the Photo team and the board, from the bottom of their heart, thank you so much. Photo was actually conceptualised by our Artistic Director, Elias Redstone, He's pretty entrepreneurial and he's pretty determined and he got to pitch his vision to Naomi Milgram. He wanted to introduce an international photo festival to Melbourne. Naomi in turn got me involved and we decided we'd test Elias's vision with some of the most important figures in photography in the city. They got pretty excited by the idea and Naomi and I both became very determined. So we then invited Bill Barness to become involved and Elias, Naomi, Bill and myself are the board of Photo. The board is supported by the most amazing team and collectively we're hoping to produce both now and into the future, one of the most exciting photography exhibitions in the world. Something truly inter interactive and something which fits so well with Melbourne. It seems to me that the role of art is to mediate our internal lives with our cultural friction. It's about who we are and how we feel, what we think about, how we can find a place for those bits and pieces that make us unique and complete, but which are otherwise not necessarily reconciled with other externalities. It seems to me that's particularly relevant as we transform and work out how we integrate with technology through digital platforms, AI, and now, of course, physical distancing. 
Photography is the medium we use already to interface with those new forms of engagement. It's what we rely on, in a sense, to find our place in what is a pretty brave new world. It's our currency in terms of showing who we are and demonstrating how it is we interact with that world. It provides the capacity for exploitation or exploration and for finding new ways of seeing ourselves and engaging. It also provides a currency, of course, for us to interface with the past and what has occurred and a new appreciation for what a, what a ph photograph means, but more importantly, a greater need to explore what integrity looks like in the photographic form. And I suspect a curiosity about what that form is by reason of our engagement with it on a daily basis. So photo is a very exciting event for us and we're hoping it's going to be exciting for you. And it wouldn't have happened without a large number of partners who have made this festival possible, including our board and founding partners, particularly the Valness Family Foundation and the Naomi Milgram Foundation, our government partners, the City of Melbourne, Creative Victoria, Metro Tunnel Creative Program, and our major partners, Maddox and Citibank. I'd also like to thank our commissioning partners, our education partners, our hotel partner, our communication partners, and our supporters have all made this festival possible. And of course, there will be no festival without those who are probably the most important. And that's those artists who are creating 50 exhibitions um, across the city and who are engaging with us and our program partners who are helping us think about what all this means. To each and to the many, I say thank you for everything you have done. I'd also like to thank the many people who have donated to our first festival. Particularly, I'd like to call out our visionaries, Kate and Ron Dewhurst, Joe Horgan and Peter Wetnell. Once again, I'd like to say thank you to our board, Elias and the photo team for the tireless work they've put into creating this event. I'm really hoping that you'll, you'll enjoy this. I encourage you to come and engage. I encourage you to experience what this festival means and to make it something really large so that its continued success is secure. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Photo 2021 wouldn't exist if it was not for the vision of our artistic director, Elias Redstone. Here he is now to share the first glimpse into our festival program. Thanks, Claire. While it's not quite the program launch we had initially imagined for our very first festival, it still makes me incredibly proud to be stood here in this rather bustling Melbourne laneway to launch the artistic program for Photo 2021 International Festival of Photography. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Boon Wurrung and Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of Melbourne and I pay my deep respects to their elders past, present and emerging and to the elders from other communities who may be watching. The Photo 2021 programme features 79 free exhibitions and artist projects across over 65 cultural institutions, museums, galleries and outdoor locations. The programme is vast. Focused on Melbourne, it spreads across Victoria, from Horsham to Benalla. In total, over 120 artists from more than 25 countries will be exhibiting, most premiering new work or presenting in Australia for the very first time. Conceived as a festival of exploration, we are bringing photography to Melbourne streets and laneways, with works installed on sculptural installations, billboards, buildings and 500 metres of hoardings with Metro Tunnel Creative Programme. The festival will encourage the public to engage with and think about photography and visual culture in new and inspiring ways and take visitors beyond traditional art sanctioned spaces to unexpected sites for the Parliament of Victoria to the Royal Botanic Gardens. Through a central theme, each edition of the festival will address issues of global significance in depth and from multiple perspectives. The theme for Photo 2021 is the truth. And in this age of alternative facts and fake news, what could be more relevant than the truth? To me, the truth is about power. It is about justice. It is about freedom. 
Since its invention in the 19th century, photography has played an inextricable part of the human story. The taking of photographs didn't just allow our species to capture, document and share images of familiar and foreign realities, often in very problematic ways. It also allowed us to see ourselves anew, as something akin to a facsimile of real life. As such, and despite the infinite subjectivity of the medium, photography has long been used to bear witness as proof of evidence, as fact. And now here we are living in the most democratic age of photography, where more people than ever before have access to a camera, where every moment of our lives is documented and broadcast for everyone to see. But what is the truth in a post-truth age? An age of Photoshop, facial filters, artificial intelligence and deep fakes. How do we determine which images are legitimate and which are not? What stories are being told and which agendas are being served? These are some of the central questions of Photo 2021. From world-renowned artists to practitioners at the very beginning of their career, every artist in the festival is responding to the truth, bringing their own history, politics and lived experience to this critical and timely topic. At the festival, you will see over 30 new commissions by fearless artists like Hoda Afshar, who explores the experiences of whistleblowers in Australia, and Gunditch Mara artist Hayley Miller-Baker, whose work outside the State Library of Victoria will stand testament to the endurance of her people. You will see groundbreaking projects by international artists presented exclusively in Melbourne for Photo 2021. These include British-Japanese artist Simon Fujiwara's remarkable film Joanne, which exemplifies the dichotomy of photography's power to both ruin and redeem a human life. Danish collective Sarah Peter and Tobias' project The Merge, which asks us whether we are living in a computer simulation. And Broomberg and Shannon's Spirit is a Bone, a powerful work constructed using facial recognition software developed for surveillance in Moscow. You'll also see new work by Zanelli Moholy, a visual activist from South Africa, championing black, lesbian, gay, trans, queer and intersex communities. We are thrilled to be presenting Moholy's work in partnership with the Biennale of Sydney and running at the same time as their major solo exhibition at Tate Modern in London. Across the state, our programme partners have curated exhibitions investigating different aspects of the truth. Not Standing Still, new approaches in documentary photography at the Monash Gallery of Art features incredible artists, amongst others Christina de Middle, Laura El Tantui, Gary Gill, Alex Soth and Max Pinkers. The site responsive exhibition at Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria is curated by Isabel Parker Phillip, Senior Curator of Contemporary Australian Art at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. And an exhibition at RMIT Gallery, which will be presented online, explores the impact of machines viewing and making photographs with Juan Juan Cuberta, Thomas Hershorn, the Turner Prize nominated Forensic Architecture, and many more. This is just a taste of the wider exhibition programme that is now live on our website. I would also like to mention the exhibitions that could not be rescheduled for Photo 2021 but form an expanded programme of exhibitions opening this year. These include Destiny Deacon's remarkable exhibition at NGV Australia and No True Self, an exhibition at the Centre for Contemporary Photography reflecting on the impact of technology on the presentation of self. In January, we will launch our events programme that will allow audiences to explore photography's relationship with the truth even further. These will include photo ideas, an expanded symposium on photography, truth and power in partnership with RMIT School of Art and the Monash Gallery of Art. And Photo Live, our series of artist conversations about the social and cultural role photography plays in our lives. There will also be programmes dedicated to photo books, as well as professional development opportunities for photographers and emerging practitioners. As a whole, the festival is a tour of what's happening in the world of photography. It's a hugely ambitious programme and I can't wait for you to experience it from the 18th of February to the 7th of March. I hope to see many of you in person at the festival and if you cannot attend, please join us online for our virtual programmes. In the meantime, I do encourage you to explore the full programme on our website, photo.org.au and follow us on social media at photofestivalau for further updates. That just leaves me to thank all our programme and education partners, donors, sponsors and advisors who have shared our vision and helped us shape this inaugural programme. 
Thank you to my incredible team and fellow board members. And above all, a massive thank you to all the participating artists and the respective galleries. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I encourage you to start exploring our website, photo.org.au. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at photofestivalau for further program updates. Thanks for joining us and good night. Thank you.